It's the game that Grubauer needed, the Kraken needed, really all of Seattle sports needed, and after the day I had leading up to it, the game I needed as well. My day actually started off all right. I watched a decently interesting Formula One race, but then we ended up going to the Seahawks game. And while I know, woe is me for getting to go to a Seahawks game, but if you saw it, I think you probably understand. And then after the Seahawks game, that's when Ish really hit the fan as our car ended up dying in the parking garage. And we didn't end up getting home until almost eight o'clock, at which point I'd watched about half of the game on my phone. So, I mean, at least I was able to watch it, which is more than can be said for some of you out there. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, that's right. What's cracking, everybody? And welcome back to Kraken r and And this time, it's for a Seattle Kraken win. Finally! Oh, finally. The Kraken, on a six-game losing streak and fresh off of maybe their worst loss of the season, faced off against a Capitals team who had not lost in regulation in their last seven games, going 6-0-1 in that span. And as expected, by the end of the game, the Kraken end up losing the possession battle, losing in the face-off circle, and also having fewer shots off on goal, as well as sending the Capitals to four power plays to the Kraken's one. But as has been the case all season long, this team that was built on analytics continues to just say screw it and do exactly the opposite of what the stats would suggest, winning this game 5-2 over DC. In spite of how things went on Friday, the Kraken come into this game with basically the same lineup that they rolled out against the Avalanche, obviously hoping for a different result and with the one exception of the fact that Grubauer was starting this game instead of coming in halfway through. On the Washington side of things, the Kraken would actually end up facing two of their expansion draft picks in Vitek Vanacek, who they picked from the Capitals and then traded back to them after signing Grubauer, as well as Dennis Chalowski, who the Kraken ended up waiving and the Capitals picked up off of waivers after having been picked by the Kraken from the Detroit Red Wings. And ultimately, as this game gets started with how things had been going for the Kraken as of late and going the other way, how things had gone for the Capitals and Ovechkin in particular, who's off to the best season start of his career, I think that most Kraken fans were just going to be happy if the team could prevent Ovechkin from breaking Gretzky's record in this game. Now, he still did have 150 goals to go, but again, it really didn't look like this was going to be a particularly close game on paper. And once again, early on it's the Kraken with pressure in the first couple of chances of the game, but within the first five minutes, eventually Kuznetsov from behind the Kraken net finds Wilson in front of it, and it's 1-0 Capitals. Here we go again. It's an, at this point, all too familiar start to the game for the Kraken, and for the fans, it's time to buckle in as this could be another long night. Fortunately, what follows is not too familiar as of late. In spite of the DC goal, and yes, I'm going to continue to call them DC, this is Washington. Seattle is in Washington. Sorry, that's a rant for another time. For the Kraken, in spite of being down 1-0 early, again, they do manage to continue to get the better of the possession, pressure, and shots off on goal here early on, and eventually are rewarded by drawing a penalty and getting onto a power play that is now up from being well under 10% to coming into this game, over 15% and now up to 25th best in the NHL, which still isn't great, but it's a lot better than 32nd. It's a slow start for the power play, but a big finish as Geeky passes net front for Schwartz, whose shot rebounds out to McCann on the other side, and he finds the back of the net to tie things up. It's another power play goal, and for the Kraken, it's the fifth power play goal in the last four games, and now four games straight scoring with the man advantage. I mean, it has to be said that this power play is heating up in a hurry, even faster than the planet is. Ooh, that got dark. This is supposed to be fun. Let's cut that part out. The power play does seem to have found a consistent way to get on the board, and I mean, who would have guessed that taking shots on net while you have guys on your team to collect rebounds would be a winning strategy? <sighs> Better late than never. The Capitals would get a few chances to respond, really controlling play for the remainder of the first period, but fortunately, Grubauer was up to the challenge and kept them off the board as we get to the first intermission tied, even through a penalty kill against Alexander Ovechkin, which is no small feat. Although the Kraken would make it look easier than it is as the night would go on. And early on in the second period, they got another chance to continue to prove that as the penalty kill once again steps up big, killing off a second DC power play, 
This time, even getting a two-on-one chance of their own going the other way that nearly ends in the first ever shorthanded goal for the Kraken. And on the other side of that second successful penalty kill, Seattle starts to take control as they ramp up the pressure and shots off on net. When Blackwell throws one net front, it's off Susie's stick, a defender's skate, and right to Schwartz as he's closing in on the backside. And it's into the goal, it's 2-1 to one Kraken, and we have a lead! Oh, man. I'd forgotten what it felt like for the Kraken to have a lead, and it feels good. And now it's by two! It's Gordon Larson on a two-on-one breakaway. Wait, L Larson? Are you sure? Okay. It's Gordon Larson on the two-on-one breakaway. Gord opts for the pass, as is the custom when the Kraken have an odd man rush, but this time it actually works, and Larson is able to elevate it over the pad of Vanacek and into the net to give the Kraken the three-to-one lead. And for him, it's his first goal in a Kraken uniform finally on the board, as this one comes less than a minute after the one to take the lead. And to add the cherry on top of this one, as the puck goes into the net, Tom Wilson follows it, taking the net to the boards and looking completely defeated inside of it. Sorry, but you don't have to be a Rangers fan to completely dislike Tom Wilson. Of course, I mean, only dislike him as the hockey player, he might be completely lovely off the ice, I have no idea, but as far as on the ice, yeah, I don't like him at all. Sorry, we're getting distracted again. Back to the game where the Capitals do have a couple of chances to respond to another cracking goal, but once again, Grubauer is having absolutely none of it, keeping the Capitals off of the board until play is able to even out between the two teams, and stays that way right up until the Kraken get on a two-on-one breakaway, and this time the puck is on Yarn Croak Stick, who's fresh off of earning his first point in a Kraken uniform with assist on the previous goal, and this time... He isn't going to pass the puck as he's looking for his first goal. He throws on the brakes in front of the net at the last second and puts it into the back of it. And they have now scored on back-to-back -back odd man rushes, which, while that is something we'd seen a lot of other teams doing, is something we were kind of waiting to see the Kraken capitalize on. And now in back-to-back -back goals, we have Larson's first goal as a Kraken, and now your boy Callie's first goal as a Kraken. So now we just have to figure out how to get Alexiak and especially Donskoy one. So now as the second period ends and we get into the third, all the Kraken have to do to get a win is protect a three goal lead against Alexander Ovechkin in the Capitals. So yeah, no one's, no one's nervous at all. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Just over three minutes into the third period, Ovechkin finally finds some open ice behind most of Seattle's defense and yeah, he's not gonna miss too many of those. It's now a two-goal lead. But okay, maybe a little nervous. For Ovechkin, it's his first on the night, obviously, though not for lack of trying, and his 15th already on the season, which would be a jaw-dropping stat and absolutely the talk of the NHL if it wasn't for everything that McDavid and Dreisaitl are doing in Edmonton to start the season. I'm so glad they're in our division. And shortly after this goal, it's time for the third DC power play of the night. Oh boy. Fortunately though, thanks in large part to Grubauer as well as another pretty decent chance the Kraken have going the other way to get that first ever shorthanded goal that, again, comes up empty, they're able to kill off a third consecutive power play and maintain that two goal lead. But we're not out of the woods just yet, as for the remainder of this third period, the Capitals are just going to slowly ramp up the pressure more and more as time goes along especially once they eventually get on a fourth power play towards the end of the third period. And as soon as the Capitals are able to establish possession of the puck on the power play, with about three and a half minutes left in the game, they also pull the goaltender for the six on four advantage. And at this point, they might as well have a warthog on the ice shooting pucks at the Kraken net with the number of shots they're getting off. Sorry, Halo Infinite just came out and I've been playing a fair amount of it. It's actually a pretty fun game, definitely better than the last couple of multiplayers. I'd say it's probably the best one since 3, but we're getting distracted. The point is, for the Kraken, it's sold your butts time, because... Yeah, even with a two-goal lead, this is not feeling over. And just past the halfway mark of the power play, one of those shots goes off the post, but it doesn't bounce out, and... Oh, I can't look, I can't look! Oh, it's out! Oh, we still have a two-goal lead! Oh! Somehow with the puck behind him, Grubauer is able to curl back, get his stick across the line, and go into starfish mode to keep this one out of the net and maintain that two goal lead. And it has to be said, with some of the pucks that have gotten past him, 
up until this game, this is definitely one of those that would have found its way somehow across the red line. And he finally catches a break here, and it does stay out. Much to the dismay of Ovechkin, who has a look on his face that kind of just says, what does it take to get another puck past this guy? I mean, we lifted a Stanley Cup together. Can't he just give me one? Or, I guess, a second one? And eventually, after a couple more big Grubauer saves, incredibly, the Kraken are able to kill off another Capitals power play, even with an extra attacker this time. And although the DC pressure doesn't stop there, the Kraken are eventually able to find the empty net when a pass from Tanev gets to Gord at half ice, and he splits the posts to make it 5-2 Kraken, where the game does eventually end. For the Kraken, it's a very needed win to end the six-game losing streak, making sure that they don't become the first expansion team in the last 10 years to lose seven consecutive games. In the end with this one, for the Kraken, they basically do everything the exact opposite of how they've been doing it since that first homestand, including getting the win. They don't limit shots, they give up 39 shots, but they do limit those odd man rushes and breakaway chances that have a much better chance of scoring. Grubauer looks much more like the Grubauer that we expected and less like the Grubauer that we've seen for the majority of this season. On the other end, the offense did not look shy whatsoever to take shots, and when they did make passes, they connected on the vast majority of them. So yeah, in basically every possible way, they managed to do things the opposite of how they've been doing them. And it worked. So it basically went exactly how we expected it to go, right? Either way, it's a chance for Kraken fans and the team to take a big sigh of relief, and honestly, I think how that Avalanche game ended in the third period probably made a difference with how this one ended up going, even if the final score and first two periods of that game were about as ugly as it gets. It's also definitely a sigh of relief for Seattle sports fans considering how things have been going lately, but either way, I'd love to know what you guys think of this one down in the comment section. My battery on the camera is about to die, so... With that, we have reached the end of this one. Thank you very much for watching to this point. If you did like or enjoy this video, there are buttons for that kind of stuff down below that help support the channel, so I would appreciate you using them. And until next time, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and go Kraken!